unrelenting pressure to post new videos. Truly meaningful work that lasts. Longevity over clout. Quality that leads to longevity. It's making meaningful work that yields a career that will last. Making work that, uh, that an audience, that viewers, that people can believe in and get behind. That is how you build a long, meaningful career. And I do think that that is something that's tremendously undervalued on YouTube, um, on a platform that has the immediate gratification system of, of, of view count and uh, comments. Facts. I stole that from one of Casey's most recent videos and I feel like it just could not be any more true. When I seen that, it really motivated me, especially because coming into 2019, I told myself that I was gonna go out every other day and try and film a video. However, today is one of those days where it's pouring out and there's no possible chance of me riding my bike. So I figured, you know what? Let me challenge myself and try and film a video that I normally would not film on this channel. However, I do believe it could be beneficial to a wide audience of you guys that are watching this. One of the most frequent comments I get asked is, I'm looking for a BMX bike, what should I get? So you're a young kid, you see a BMX rider in your neighborhood, you see it on television, you see it on social media, and you wanna get into the sport. So you decide to look it up online and you tell your parents you want a BMX bike. They see the prices and don't want to spend that much money because they know you're going to outgrow it. So you know what they do? They take you to the biggest retail corporation, Walmart. Your parents look at the price tag and they buy the bike. And little do you know, now you have a shitty bike that is bound to break within a week. Today, I hope to drop some knowledge about BMX and what bikes you should and should not buy. This is your $80 BMX bike. This is the Mad Gear 1, the Mad Gear Pro, the Green Machine, whatever the hell you want to call it. This is hands down one of the shittiest bikes on the market right now. And I'm assuming that's why they labeled it as the Mad Gear 1 because it's their lowest level entry bike. Before we start ripping this bike apart, we got to find out who's assembling these bikes because because by the time you get to the register, the bike has nearly fallen apart. Let's find out who is putting these bikes together. I'm curious to know what the average age of a Walmart employee is, so I typed it in on Google. And the first thing that came up was Reuters.com. Now, I don't know if this source is credible, but one of the things that caught my eyes is this little quote that says, 55% of part-time employees also said that they did not have enough food to meet their basic needs. Walmart employees are among the largest groups on food stamp subsidies, according to labor experts. Now that says a lot. These are people that are literally just getting by. And to think that these are the people putting together bikes on a daily basis, do you think they really care about their job? Probably not. Now when you think about it and you put two and two together, at Walmart, in the bicycle department, do they actually have trained technicians putting these bikes together? Who knows? I mean, if they do, they're getting paid minimum wage anyway, so they could probably give two shits less about their job, which leads to the fact of the bike falling apart within seconds, if not minutes, to a few days. This probably will tarnish any brand deal with Walmart in the future, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, these bikes are horrible, and when me and Billy purchase them, that is for entertainment purposes only. I would never, ever, ever recommend that you guys should buy these bikes, it's deadly. But let's go even deeper and talk about the company that is creating these bikes. So the company that is mass producing these BMX bikes is known as Kent Bicycles, and this company produces millions of bikes yearly. And I wanted to learn a little bit more about them, so I looked them up, and one of the first articles that came up was a Forbes article with one of the CEOs of Kent. Now this is super official, Forbes is a huge magazine, and this is what they had to say. Nearly two years ago, Kent International CEO, Arnold Calmer, opened a bicycle factory in Manning, South Carolina the first major bike plant built in the United States in decades. Bike makers include Kent, one of the nation's largest with revenues of more than $200 million. That is insane for a bicycle company. That is absurd amount of money. Fled this country for Asia in the 1980s and 1990s, Kent makes mass market bikes, most of which sell for $69 to 199 at Walmart, Target, Toys R Us, and Amazon. Maybe I gotta start doing this. $200 million, that is insane. This is this is the person that is behind these $69 bikes. Commerce says, we supply more than 25% of all the bicycles Walmart sells. We do approximately 2 million bicycles each year to Walmart, 1 million to other US customers, and 400,000 to other countries, including Canada. It's a lot of bicycles. What the f So now you gotta keep that in mind. How many bicycles are being built daily? And how long does it take to build one bike? If they're supplying millions per year, it's gotta be thousands a day, which leads to them probably not being tested for strength. Another thing to keep in mind is, 
if the bikes are selling for $84 or $74, whatever the hell your local retail store is selling them for, what do you think it costs them to make the bike? Now they need to have some sort of profit margin. So I'm gonna assume that these bikes actually cost anywhere between $20 to $30 to make. And then they sell it to the store for probably $50 and then the store probably makes a profit of $30 plus. dollars. That's what I wanna assume. Having some background in the BMX industry, those of you guys that are just getting into BMX, please take this information into consideration when you make your first purchase on a BMX bike. And I know this is gonna be a complete bias opinion, but these bikes are horrible and they're not worth $89. Even though this bike is branded as MGP, it's actually produced by Kent. So all the parts that you would see on a Kent Chaos are gonna be on this MGP1 bike or whatever the hell you wanna call it. The same cranks, the same wheels, the same pedals, the same grips, everything. And that is why this bike is worth $80. Now I'm gonna insert some clips and probably compare my bike to this bike. That way you guys get a better understanding of what you're paying for. The bright green frame, Jesus man. This this is definitely not one of my favorite colors. We know nothing about the geometry. All that we know is it's got Mag Gear stickers all over the bike. This bike wasn't even listed on the Mag Gear website, which uh, I thought was pretty funny because they probably only sell this bike to Walmart. All the bearings on this bike are unsealed. What that means is all the bearings don't have a plastic lining around it. They pretty much just look like BBs and just circle around balls. When you take anything apart on this bike, like the cranks, let's say you took them off, more than likely all these little BBs would fall out. Same thing goes with the headset. When you take that fork off, everything is just gonna fall out. Putting it back together more than likely will be a nightmare. This thing is hard to look at. You got this basic skull in the middle of the seat, which let me say this thing is hard as a rock. Ain't nobody wanna sit on that. The seat post is like 10 feet long. Shit is crazy. One piece cranks. That's all one solid piece. And it honestly looks like the sprocket is attached. Chain guard, of course. That way your pants don't get greasy. Regular basic plastic pedals. Then you have white wall tires with a maximum of 40 PSI. But at the store, they just like to give you with no air pressure. That way you're just rolling out on flats. The stem. This thing is like a cube. What the hell is that? The thing looks plastic. By the way, they don't tighten it. So when you walk out of the store and bring your kid to the skate park, be prepared for him to go over the handle bars because they're gonna go all the way down for some reason they don't like to tighten the handlebars they don't like to put air pressure in the tires really weird brakes front and back the back brakes didn't even work you pull the lever and nothing happens reflectors of course because you got to be safe because you know when you don't have those brakes and you're blowing through the stop sign you're just gonna get smashed by the car oh fuck off Ugh. They give you a little warning on the bottom tube of the bike and it says always wear a helmet. Make sure stem and pedals are tight. Check your brakes. Do not ride at night. Read owner's manual for a free owner's manual or questions call 1-800 made in China. Underneath that sticker, it also says this bicycle is not designed for off-road use or for stunting. Well, I wish I would have read that before I did this. It's so weird though, because Kent did a collab with X Games, a contest for extreme sports, and it has an X Games sticker. So to have this sticker and to say that it's not meant for stunts, I don't know. Let's not even talk about the grips, man. The grips are hard as a rock. The bike does come with a gyro, which is pretty cool if the brakes did work. Then you got screw on pegs. Highly recommend you do not try and grind on a ledge because they will unscrew. Also, you will find that the axles do bend on these bikes very, very easily. Both wheels are 48 spoke wheels, which should be stronger. But in this case, with this single wall rim, Literally, you will bend it by just dropping into a ramp, and it happened to Stefan. Let me see. Let me see. Spin it. Spin it. It's quiet. You did that? That baby. That was a good 20 seconds. All right. <laughs> I think we covered the whole bike. Yeah, it's just a big piece of shit that's not worth $89. But we're gonna do a little comparison. I want to compare my bike and what it cost to this $89 Walmart bike. And I've never actually tallied up what my bike is worth, so we're gonna do that right now. Let's see how much my bike is actually worth, a real professional BMX bike compared to a Walmart professional BMX bike. My signature frame, which actually just dropped, cost $349. The fork costs $129.99. The headset, it costs $24.99. Bars cost $64.99. The grips cost $10.99. Stem cost $59.99. Front wheel cost $144.99. Both tires together cost $55.98. Four pegs cost $63.96. Bottom bracket $24.99. Cranks $129.99. Sprocket is $54.99. Pedals are $16.99. 
$29.99. The chain is $26.99. Back wheel is $229. The seat is $32.99. Seat post is $24.99. Last but not least, two tubes, $5 each, $10. The total comes out to $1,456.80. That is 16 times the amount of the Walmart bike. The Walmart bike is a bike that's gonna last you maybe a day to a week, if not seconds, and my bike could last you forever. I'm gonna say at least 10 years minimum. If you take care of your bike, it will last. All of these parts are tested and ridden by professional riders. There is not a single professional BMX rider for Kent. This is a $200 million business and they don't have a single professional rider. And you're gonna go out and you're gonna buy this $89 bike for your kid, you're bugging out. I'm telling you guys from experience, your kid could get hurt. And, and that's why I'm making this video so you guys don't go out and make the mistake of buying your kid this shitty Walmart bike. Just spend that extra 100 or $200 and get them something decent that will last. Eventually when they grow and get better at tricks, you just get them better components that will last. Colt makes one of the best BMX products in the game. These are people that live for BMX designing all their products and there are professional riders testing the product. I am gonna 100% recommend Colt and I am a professional rider for the team, but I've been riding these parts since before I started riding for the company. I've never broken a frame. Of course, I've broken little parts like pedals and spokes, but that happens to everybody. And for those of you guys that are looking to get into BMX and are looking for a BMX bike, the first link in the description, my website, I have a bunch of complete bikes for sale as well as a bunch of aftermarket BMX parts. Walmart bike, no matter what you do, no matter what maintaining you do, that thing is going to f explode. I did go out and buy that bike. That bike is mine. I bought it for the purpose of this video. Now I have a choice of just going back and returning it or destroying it and then trying to return it for another video. So if you guys would like to see that, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be going to Europe next week. A lot of videos planned, some great content, some amazing people, and some of the best bike riders in the world. And I will see you guys in a few days. Peace.